Hey guys, Tim Lowe's here, back in the studio. It's been a while, but I got a great topic to talk to you guys about. Uh, it's something that a lot of you have asked about on the YouTube comments. Oh, Tim, what are the best YouTube export settings? Well, YouTube commenter, I'm here to help you out. Two things, number one, YouTube actually provides you uh, with the best YouTube settings uh, for uploading. Uh, and number two, I'm here to help you out. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you the best YouTube export settings for Adobe Premiere or Adobe Encoder, as you will see. Let's take a look. So as you can see, I have a Premiere project open here. This is actually just a video on Dynamics, as you can see, which you can actually check out right here. Very important, uh, audio is very important. Uh, anyways, so I'm, my video is all set, I'm gonna export it. And to do that, I'm gonna click Command M, and that brings me to the export settings. So I don't know why people ask me this so many times, but it's so easy. Uh, you basically just go down the list of things that you want, and then you could set a preset, which I'll show you. Let's get started. So number one, format. H.264 is the main setting that YouTube likes. H.264 is an inter-frame codec as opposed to, as opposed to an intra-frame codec. Uh, it is a codec that uh, is used for playback, including web playback, including YouTube playback. YouTube is asking you to use H.264 as the codec for exporting. Uh, intra-frame codec as opposed to inter-frame codec uh, is something like ProRes. ProRes is used for editing. As soon as you're done editing in your intra-frame codec, you export it to an inter-frame codec like H.264. I don't know how many times people tell you, oh no, Tim, you should be exporting an intra-frame codec like Apple ProRes. No, don't listen to them because number one, it takes up way too much space in your hard drive that you don't need for playback. And number two, it takes so long for YouTube to transcode it back to H.264, which it's gonna use anyways. So you're just wasting time for both of yourselves. And you're, you're wasting space and you're wasting time. Okay, rant over. Uh, preset, we'll get back to this. Comments, you can add a comment if you want. Output name, I'm gonna, you know, you can click this and then choose your place. Uh, I'm just gonna choose that name that came with it. Make sure you export the video and audio. Summary, it's always good to look at this while you're choosing stuff. Effects, I don't care about any of this stuff and neither should you if you're just exporting to YouTube. Uh, video, most of the time, it's best just to click match source. If you're one of those little twerps that uh, think you know it works if you just change your 1080 video to 4K, it doesn't work like that. So whatever the size of the source file is, keep it as that size. So in f for instance, this is 1080, we'll keep it at 1080. Same goes with frame rate, keep it the same. Keep all of this the same. And right here for render at maximum depth, we'll check that. So now here's the most important part is bitrate settings. This is something that a lot of people ask for and I think it's the most important part when it comes to uploading to YouTube. So what you wanna do is VBR, variable bitrate, two pass. Um, I'll get back to you on what that means. Uh, so target bitrate for 1080p video at 30 frames, frames per second, 10 megabits per second is all you need. YouTube suggests eight, uh, but you know, if there's a lot of movement, if there's a lot of stuff happening, bump it up to 10 megabit, megabits per second, it's not gonna do much. As you can see, for instance, if I go to back down to eight, See how it's 455 megabytes? I'll do eight. Brings it down to 366. So if, if space is a problem with you, do eight. But if it's not, bump it up to 10. Uh, you're not hurting anyone. So if you're wondering how bit rates affect videos, this is how it's done. Um, with a target bit rate set at uh, one megabit per second, it's gonna look like this. With the target bit rate set at five megabits per second, it's gonna look like that. And just for instance, just so you guys aren't going overboard on everything, target bit rate set at 100 megabits per second looks like this. So as you can see, uh, if your video is at 1080p, there's no need to go that high. So going back to VBR, VBR is variable bit rate, which means it kind of 
uh, goes back and forth uh, around the 10 mark uh, in terms of bit rate. So if there's a big solid color like this green behind me, um, that encoder is going to see that you know not a lot, not a lot of information is happening there because it's just one solid color and it's not changing around. As opposed to let's say you're shooting a big crowd where there's a lot of different information, a lot of uh, bits coming through the uh, the encoder. Um, that's where it's going to have to bump up the bit rate. Uh, so as you can see here on the second part, there's a maximum bit rate. Um, so you know it usually doesn't change the estimated file size. So if you go down to 50. Yeah, that doesn't do much. And two pass, that basically means it, the encoder is going to go through that video twice, all the way through, to find the most efficient way of uh, uh, using up that target bit rate or even that maximum bit rate. Uh, so advanced settings, keyframe distance, that doesn't matter. VR video, if your video is VR, you should check that, but mine isn't VR. So if time doesn't matter for you, uh, check off this maximum render quality. Uh, it, it, it'll take a little bit of extra time, but you know, if, you, if that doesn't matter with you, then by all means go right ahead. If your video is 4K, since it's four times the size of 1080, just YouTube recommends between 35 and 45 around there. So, you know, do 45, that's fine. And then, a, you know, a quadruple that as well, making that 200, that won't do much. But like I said, if this is a 1080p video, it's not going to make a much difference if you're going to make the bit, the bit rate uh, that size. It's just going to make the file size bigger and take longer to upload. Um, so I'm going to bring this back down to 10 and 50. If your video is, you know, uh, a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second or something, bump it up a, a little bit. Maybe you just bring it from 10 to 15 just to be safe and then bring this up to 60, whatever, not a huge deal. And that's it. Uh, one more thing, uh, so this queue and export, basically export immediately exports it within Premiere Pro. And then there's also queue, which you can bring it to Adobe Encoder. You should have that, it is very useful. So basically uh, what that does is it brings it to Encoder and Encoder encodes uh, the video while you can still work on Premiere Pro if you have another project that you're working on or something, it's just much easier. But if it's just one video that you're doing, um, just hit export. So you don't have to do this anymore. You don't have to keep asking. Click right here. Save preset. Boom. I'm gonna call it Tim, because that's my name. I'll cue that. Let me delete all this. That's the old one. Uh, there it is, H.264 with a Tim preset. And that's where it's gonna go. And then you're gonna click play, and then it goes. That's me, and that's it. That's all you gotta do. You do it once, hit that preset button, and you're, you're, done, you're done for life. Um, unless you get a new camera or something weird. Um, got any questions, comment down below. If you want me to cover something else on intro frame, inter frame encoding, be happy to cover it. Uh, let me know. Uh, make sure you subscribe here or here. I'll be very happy to have you uh, in your mailbox every week. Make sure you smash that like button as hard as you can. Um, comment down below on how hard you smash that like button and maybe I'll pick the best one and cover it in the next video. We'll see. Uh, bye. Oh shit. <laughs>